I want to show you a little still life trick that I use. I want to use this pear in a still life, but I know it's going to tip over. So, I buy this Sculpty Clay, a little bit of this, and kind of warm it up, shape it, and I can stick it right underneath my pear a bowl, prop it up, I can do that to keep it from rolling, and it's a real nice trick to use keeps things from falling off in the middle of your painting. Alright, so now I have my pear where I want it and I want to show another trick that I um, use. Most of you know I paint birds in my still life paintings. Figure out how the lighting's going to work with my bird, which I can't really set up on this pear. I use Sculpty again and I can prop it up on a vase or hopefully on this pear and see how the lighting is going to work for me. And that gives me a rough idea of how my lighting is going to work for this little guy that I'm going to use on the still life painting for my bird model. And this helps me decide my light is coming from left to right and I understand how uh, the lighting is going to hit my model and that will help me make my bird look as though it's within the still life painting. You know, lighting is so important when you're setting up a still life painting. And I want to show you one other little trick for casting shadows. I just use a piece of cardboard and I have my light coming from the left. And you can see if I move this cardboard closer or farther away, it changes the lighting out. I like, I like the dark sh shadow behind my model there. Um, I think that'll look real nice. So you can see my light is here, it's a spotlight, and I use a color corrective um, bulb that simulates uh, daylight for cool light, and I can raise or lower it and help control the lighting on my subject. So you can see lighting the still light from right to left is not as comfortable on our eyes. In the West, we're used to reading from left to right, so it's more comfortable for us to have our still life lighted that way.